The King and I opens on Broadway and runs for three years. The Goon Show is first broadcasted on the BBC Home Service in the UK. And Harry Truman declares an official end to the war with Germany. The year is 1951. And this Lido Coop was on offer from Lincoln. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that loves the cars off the beaten path. We also cover the classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home of the orphan cars and cars that are being forgotten. We post between four to five videos a week. Engine episodes on Wednesday dive in deep on the history and specs, but most importantly, show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you'll totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1951 Lincoln Lido Coupe is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. They have over 900 cars on sale when recording this video. Anybody can peruse their inventory for hours and more pictures and information pertaining to this very car. Be sure to click the link below after the show. 1951 Lincoln was broken down into two model offerings. Lincoln, which rides a wheelbase of 121 inches, and the Cosmopolitan, which rides a wheelbase of 125 inches. Lincoln line could be had as a sports sedan, Club Coupe, and Lido Coupe. Lincoln offered the Lido Coupe from 1950 through 1951, and it's an often misconcepted that the Lido was a line of cars offered by Lincoln. It was more or less a trim package. Maybe not so much a trim package, but a roof option. Think GM with the hardtop movement. This was Lincoln's answer to GM's hardtops. It's important to note that the vinyl top could be had as the Lido Coupe or the Capri under the Cosmopolitan line. This era of Lincoln is known as EL Series Lincoln, and it was produced from 1949 through 1951, replacing the H Series or the Zephyr Lincoln era, designed by Eugene Bob Gregory. This was the first Lincoln to share its body with Mercury, and I'm sorry for doing this, but Mercury on top, Lincoln on the bottom, what happened? Mercury looks good, the Lincoln, which is more of a premium brand, is kind of, um, it's kind of an acquired taste. But maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? Let's talk specs. 214 inches long, 76.7 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 121 inches. It weighs 4,280 pounds. Price, $2,702, which is equivalent to you spending $31,974.12 in year 2023. Total 1951 Lincoln production was 32,574 units, of which 16,761 were Lincoln, 15,813 were Cosmopolitan. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 337 cubic inch displacement, flathead V8, 5.5 liters. It's good for 154 horsepower, 3,600 RPM, 275 pound-feet, or 373 newton meters at 1,800 RPM. With a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 4.4 inches, compression is 7 to 1. It could be backed with a 3-speed manual or a 4-speed hydromatic automatic transmission supplied by General Motors. 0 to 60 with the 4-speed hydromatic was 17 seconds, theoretical top speed of 94 miles per hour while achieving an average fuel economy rating of 11.6 miles to the gallon. Chassis specs. Frame is rigid, heavy steel, cold riveted, and welded, X-member constructed. All the bodies are made of steel with insulated fiberglass padding. Front suspension is independent front suspension with coil springs, telescopic type shock absorbers mounted inside the springs. Rear suspension uses a longitudinal semi-elliptical leaf spring. The rear shock absorbers are mounted sea legs style. Let's talk styling. Look at these headlights. Look at how far back these are recessed in. Also notice it's narrower here than it is here. But not just that, the narrowest point is like right here. It's not, 
it's not the same the whole way. It's like elongated. Very interesting. Turn signals. Notice they come to a bit of a point here. As well as this part here is raised. And this has a... Almost like a spine. Lots of textures in this design. And I'll be the first to admit this isn't my favorite era of Lincoln. But seeing this car in person is definitely better than seeing it in pictures. This car doesn't take pictures well, in my opinion. Lots of levels and different tiers everywhere. The bumpers, how it comes up to here and then comes out a little bit and then goes back in. Bumperettes. There isn't like a straight line on this car. It's all got some sort of characteristic about it. This part right here looks very Hudson-like to me anyway. How it comes up to the ornament. Also notice the center line going back towards the windshield, split windshield. It's a very smooth design. It just kind of bends. There aren't any ridges in the hood aside from the center line. See how these bumpers wrap around as well as this bright work. The wheel wells are rolled. Split windshield with opposing windshield wipers that sit that are mounted on little pedestals. This one has a vinyl top. It does have drip rails that run the length of the car. The mirrors are interesting. They have these little hoods on them. How cool is that? I think that's aftermarket because it's stamped inside there. It says mirror visor. But that's kind of cool. Has this rain deflector on top of the vent window to try to keep rain water out of the vent window. I don't know how well that works. Coming to the rear window, it does have a bit of a wraparound to it. It has this thick belt line trim that runs the belt line of the car. But the profile, the side profile, is very smooth. Aside from this line here that comes down and then kind of S, just an ever so slight S bend down and runs the belt line of the car the rest of the way out the back. The belt line trim does the same thing with this bit of a pad right there. This car has fender skirts. Look how this flares out. It also exits the car, this, this line here, this channel in the belt line also exits much like a Hudson. Gas filler door and bright work around it. Look at this textured effect here. These tail lights though, man, they remind me of the Continental Mark II. It's not the same exact profile, but this shape is very similar, especially if you look top down, very similar. Which is super interesting to me because I've never seen this car in person. So I was unaware that this shape existed prior to the Mark II. But look at these bumpers, how they wrap. It's a gorgeous bumper design with nice Lincoln 
script there. Getting inside. This door has quite a bit of heft to it. It's a pretty heavy door. And it opens almost 90 degrees to allow plenty of access into this cabin. This feels like a vinyl material. And down here, it's more of like a cloth, maybe broadcloth, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe just a textured cloth material. And down here, it feels like vinyl again. Armrest, door handles to get out, window crank for the big window. It operates like this. This one has crank operatable vent windows, which you have to open first, and then just cranks open like that. Look at how this protrudes outward so it can meet up with the dashboard. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, the high beam switch, hand brake, hood release, brake pedal, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. Underneath the steering wheel, there is enough room to put my hand in between my lap and the steering wheel. The seat's a bit in the pushed up position. I'm not gonna move it or try to move it, but my knees are nowhere near the dashboard. The pedals, it looks like the pedals come out of the floor. Ashtray. On to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right. Oil pressure, gasoline gauge, just below that starter button, headlights, speedometer with odometer and tripometer inside of it, hand brake, left air vent, right air vent, Amp meter, coolant temperature, clock, blower motor, key, windshield wipers, radio, drive modes read, neutral, drive, low, reverse. This one has the four speed GM hydromatic. Up above, there are sun visors, and this is what they look like. They're a bit on the slender side. Rear view mirror in the center, daytime, nighttime feature. Another sun visor over here for the passenger to the glove box test here's our test subject here's my hand for reference here is the glove box in question yeah it doesn't fit bummer getting in the rear seat let's pull the seat forward like that and just notice how it pivots out of the way also notice how flat the floor is floor is flat it's very Nash like here is what the front looks like from the back let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio it's kind of cozy in this car it's not bad though and that's what visibility looks like out the rear from the back there is a bit of a parcel shelf there as well as center armrest that can come down this car has tons of room in the back here, plus these concave inward, so you have even more room. There is robe rails on the back of both seats, as well as ashtrays on the back of both seats. Garage door style with a cigarette lighter inside of both. Creature Comforts back here. There is a dome light in the center. There is a grab handle on both sides. I'm assuming this is what a coat hook of some sort. Armrest. The windows do not go down per se, but they are vent style. So the vent is right here, the opener. And then you just push her out like that. And that's as far open as they'll go.
Everything that is found on the driver's side can also be found on the passenger side. Armrest, vent style window, groovy coat hook. This is what I look like sitting in the back of the 51 Lincoln. I got tons of headspace back here. It does not feel claustrophobic in this car whatsoever. There's tons of leg room. This would be a really good car if you had a family and you were hauling people around. If you wanted to go to a car show in it, this would be one a really good contender. Release the hood from the inside. The hood is extremely heavy. Six volt battery. The flathead V8 that sits way down inside there. The generator mounted on top. Oil bath air cleaner. Look at all the heating stuff over here. Notice the oil filter is outside the block. Take a look at the steering rack. On the positive side, both spacious front and rear built solid, smooth performance with the 337 flathead V8 against it. This is definitely an acquired taste car and it shares the body with the Mercury. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, a bit different in the first scenario with some other acquired taste cars. But which one would you rather have, 1947 Chrysler Royal or 1951 Lincoln Lido or... 1939 Buick Roadmaster. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving to the second scenario, 1951 Cadillac or 1951 Lincoln or 1951 Chrysler. Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group I call The After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences, anything car related you could share on there. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I really do appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comments. And until next time, toodaloo!